from Sydney, Darwin, Jakarta, Singapore, Calcutta, Karachi, Cairo, and Rome. After customs and passport examination, there will be transport available direct to London Terminal. Thank you. <laughs> I have no passport. I see. I expect you'd like to see the airport security officer. Yes, thank you. I know the way. Hello, Mac. Good morning, sir. Uh, I'll tell Mr. Chubb you're here. Good. Uh, Mr. Summers here, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Oh, yes. Yes. He'll see you now, sir. Thank you, Mac. Well, you managed to get out. Only just. So I heard. You use the emergency route. Why? I had to. The frontier was blocked. Besides, I had a bit of trouble. Pan? No, I've I've got a rib strapped up, but it'll be all right. Same old room. Nothing changes. But people do. They get older. Of course, there are some jobs where it doesn't matter. My job, for instance. Not mine. Well, how was I to know that Markheim was going to change his mind halfway? There was a time when you'd have sensed it and brought Van safely back. Anyway, I got Markheim in the end. You were responsible for Van. I know I was. I'm very sorry. Let's see. You joined us in 1939. 1940, parachuted into Bavaria, yes. Captured by Gestapo, interrogated. Escape of Professor Jacob Werner, yes. Yeah. 43, Paris, liaison d'ailleurs, return Germany. Carried on escape, Professor Carl Chazar, and wife, yes. 4445, in charge, counter espionage, UK, Northern Area Headquarters, Liverpool, Hamburg. Details of mine defenses, yes. Yes. Yes, quite a good record until now. Aren't I allowed one mistake? No. I see. Well, what happens now? You're where you came in. You're not a regular. You would have had to go sooner or later anyway. I used to be a newspaper man once. Do you think there'd be any future in the real life story of the Secret Service? I should think a very short future, Major Summers. Very short. You've got a little money, haven't you? Well, then, forget all this. Go back to real life again. Real? Well, how do I start? Well, to begin with, you'll stop carrying a gun. You're going to miss me, you know. I'm one of the best men you've got. Had is the operative word, old boy. You want to start thinking about a job for yourself. Something quiet in the country. I might be able to help you. So that you can keep tabs on me. Something like that, yes. There'll be a decoration for you, of course. You won't mind that. What for? Missing Van? No. For the times you didn't miss. Oh, very touching. 
Well, that's that. Goodbye, sir. Goodbye, David. And thanks. Get Mr. Shepler. Hello, Shepler. You remember what I told you about Summers? Well, he's just left. Same for me. Thank you. Oh, my dear fellow. Back again, eh? Marvelous life. Always fancy myself as a newspaper man. If only I didn't get so tired. What do you do for a living, Willie? Oh, nothing, old boy. I've never found anything to suit me. Pity. Mm, that's what my old man thinks. How's the pen pushing? Rotten. I'm looking for a job. Mm. Terrible life, isn't it? Cheers. So, apart from your languages and this uh, newspaper work that you did once, you have no qualifications at all, Major Summers. Mr. Summers. Yes, I'm so sorry. Yes. Some officers like to retain the. Um... Yes, yes, I know. <laughs> Well, we must see what we have for him. I suppose you haven't a working knowledge of commercial Portuguese. <laughs> no. No, I'm afraid I haven't. No. Well, there is one here. I don't necessarily recommend it. I just mention it in passing. Why? Is it dangerous? <laughs> well, no. <laughs> No, not exactly. But, uh, I think I should tell you that we've had the greatest difficulty in getting people even to consider it. What is the job? Cataloguing butterflies. Oh. Do I have to know anything about them? Uh, well, uh, no. No, the only uh, necessary qualification seems to be a sound general education and an amiable disposition. Uh, you appear to have both, if I may yeah. say so. Thank you. But I think I must point out that, in our opinion, there's very little future in it. Butterflies. Well, I could think about it, I suppose. Yes, I'm afraid that's what they all say. Hello, Willie. Have a drink. Hello, boy. Thanks. How's the job hunting? Fine. All fixed up. I'm celebrating. Good. What do you have? Scotch? Two whiskeys, please. Hello? Chubb? Shepley here. Well, he's fixed up. Yeah. All okay. Nice quiet family, nice quiet place. Cataloguing butterflies. Hey, babe. I'm looking for a house called White Lodge. Oh, you know. Do you know it? Yeah, I know it. Well, do you mind telling me how to get there? I'll do better than that. I'll show you. I'm going there myself. Ah, well, that's jolly decent of you. Do you know the Fentons? No, do you? Yeah, in a manner of speaking. What manner would that be? You'd better ask the Fentons. Everyone knows me around here. Well, that'll be your personality, of course. Are you the chap that's come to help with the butterflies? That's right. Nice part of the country, this. You stick to butterflies. Coleus crocus, clouded yellow. Where's Sethy? Oh, just the light. You're blocking the light. Oh, Nicholas, do stop for a minute and listen to me. I always listen to you, my dear. I can do almost anything at the same time and still listen to you. Nicholas, I'm serious. Oh, Jess, let's have peace. Where is Sophie? Over in the far meadow, trying to find clouded yellows. Why? Well, this man who's coming, this summer's, he must be warned about her. Oh, really, my dear, that's a little unnecessary. What's he to be warned about? After all, he's just a young man who's coming to stay with us and do a little work. You know Sophie just as well as I do. Well, I really don't see what could happen. It's a local young man I can deal with. But this is something quite different, somebody here living in the house. Oh, now, don't let's start off imagining things. I don't like a stranger here talking to Sophie, asking her questions. You'd no business to arrange it without consulting me. Well, I'm sorry, my dear, but it's done now. I'm David Summers. No. Oh. Makes a nice change to come round to the front door. I've uh, 
Brought a couple of rabbits for you, Mrs. Fenton. Take them down to the back, will you? Anything you say, Mrs. Fenton. How do you do? Uh, how do you do? I'm so pleased to meet you. I think my husband is... Oh, Nicholas. This is Mr. Summers. How do you do, sir? How are you? I see you've begun making friends already. Hick's quite well known around here, isn't he, dear? I'll tell Addie to bring your bag to your room. Thank you. I'll show you where to put your car. Thank you, sir. Come in. Hello, sir. Our Eddie has brought up your bags, I see. Please go on. Usually she has to be told things twice. You must have made an impression on mm. her. By the way, there's a bigger room at the back of the house if you prefer it, but this is the one that has the view of the garden. Oh, no, this is perfect, thank you, sir. Good. Well, I hope you'll be comfortable. I'm sure I shall. If you don't mind my saying so, you hardly seem to be the sort of man that would, well... Want to catalogue butterflies? Well, yes. Mm. Of course, you made it quite clear in your letter that you're not interested in butterflies as such, but I can't help wondering what attracted you to the job. Your references were really excellent. They did make it clear to you that it was only temporary, didn't they? Oh, yes, they did, sir. Well, it's simply that I've got rather tired of people and cities, and... Well, the thought of two or three months doing something quiet and peaceful in the country seemed to me just what I wanted. Oh, yes. I understand. A convalescence of the mind. Peace, that's what we all strive for, don't we? I will understand. I hope you'll be happy. Thank you, sir. We're, we're very quiet here. There's just my wife and myself and my wife's niece. I, um, I feel that perhaps I ought to tell you something about Sophie. Your wife's niece? Yes. We're her guardian. She's not had a very happy life, and you may find her a little strange in certain respects. Oh. Well, I, I thought I'd just tell you that. She's a sweet child, but she's very highly strung, and she isn't always quite reasonable in the things she says. But Jess, my wife, understands her. Now, please don't think too much about it, but I, I thought I'd let you know. I'll remember, sir. Well, uh, that's that. A tea will be a little late today. My wife always goes down to Tap Grove on Tuesdays and Fridays, so it'll be five o'clock instead of half past four. Well, I leave you to it. Uh, if there's anything you want, you will ring, won't you? Yes, thank you. I can't promise that Addie will answer the bell, but it's, it's always worth trying. <laughs> Five o'clock downstairs, I'll see you then. Fine, thank you, sir. I'm very sorry. I thought you'd gone down to the village. I don't... Oh. Who are you? My name is Summers. David Summers. Oh. Are you the one that's going to do the butterflies for Nicholas? That's right. You must be Mrs. Fenton's niece. Yes. How do you do? How do you do? You play very well, Miss Sophie. Do I? Jess hates me to play. I thought you were Jess when you came in. I see. Are you a doctor? No, 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 I'm not a doctor. And you haven't come here to explain to me that I get things muddled and wrong? No, no, I've come to help with the butterflies. That's what Jess said. Well, it's true. There was a doctor who came here once before. Oh, yes? You think I'm very foolish, don't you? No, no, I don't. They, um, they asked me down to tea. Can you tell me where they have it? On the terrace. Thank you. I'm sorry I disturbed your playing. Jess is back, so I couldn't have gone on anyway. Oh, what a pity. Mr. Summers. Yes? You won't tell Jess what I said to you, will you? No, no, I won't. Good morning. 
morning, sir. Good morning, Andy. Good morning. Good morning. Now, here is the list of my collection. You'll see how it goes. It's in alphabetical order. Thanks, sir. It tallies with the butterflies in these trays and with those over there. And here are the reference books. I've just muddled through this morning. That's right. See how you get on. And by the way, when you push these trays in again, will you do it very gently? If they're jarred too much, it harms the specimens. Yes. I'll be careful. Good. And if you want me, I shall be just outside in the garden. Right, sir. Thank you. I told you not to come to this part of the house. Well, I don't mind which part of the house I come to. Why can't I still come to you? Because I like it better here. I like the view. Get out of here before I call my husband. We should have called him a long time ago. Are you going to call him at all? Oh, Jim, sorry. I didn't mean to say that. I didn't really. Please. Please. Got any honey to spare? What are you doing here? Oh, don't be so high and mighty. <laughs> Why don't you relax a bit? Don't you like me? All the other girls do. You've no right to be here. Go away. Now, that's not very friendly, is it? Give me my comb. Say please. Please. <laughs> no, not friendly enough. Well, I can't get any honey, and I can't get friendly, so uh, I'll keep this. Hick! Hick! Is there anything the matter? He's taking my coat. Is he a friend of yours, too? I don't know. He does stupid things. What's he been up to? Oh, nothing. Well, I'll... I'll get back to my butterflies. I should avoid Hick if I were you, child. I do. How long is Mr. Summers going to stay here? Oh, a month or two. I like him. I shouldn't say so. Not to your aunt. Oh, I wouldn't. Not to Jess. I must get another comb. Don't you lie to me. Oh, Mr. Summers, I didn't see you standing there. I'm really very sorry. Sophie, please go. I expect you think I'm very unkind to Sophie. Well, it's none of my business, Mrs. Fenton. But you must be thinking it. That was her father's music she was playing. Her father's? He was George Malraux, the composer. Malraux? Didn't he shoot himself and his wife? She was my sister. Marriage was hopeless from the start. 
But why the suicide? He was unbalanced. He needed someone strong who could understand him. Sophie was only six when it happened. It was dreadful. You see, she found them. When Nicholas and I arrived, she was kneeling by her mother. She'd bent over her. And there was blood on her hair. How dreadful. Mr. Summers, I have to tell you this. Sophie is like her father, and it's very bad for her to be reminded of the past. We have to watch her. She gets things twisted and wrong. It can be dangerous. She's right. I do get things muddled. We all get muddled sometimes. Good morning. Good morning. I was hoping I'd see you, Sophie. Why? I have an apology to make to you. Oh, you mean about last night? It wasn't your fault. No. You once told me that your aunt wouldn't let you play the piano. And I didn't believe you. I'm sorry. You're very kind, Mr. Summers. No, no, it's not that. It's just that I suddenly realized how very lonely you must be. You never go out. Nobody ever comes here. Except Hick. Oh, well, yes, but you haven't really got any friends, have you? No. Or relatives, apart from Mr. and Mrs. Fenton. When you've always been alone, you get used to it. Oh, is that quite true? No, it, it isn't. It's nearly true. You wouldn't know. I know what it's like to be alone. I know what despair can feel like, too. Do you? Mm, even the sun looks grey. And self-pity is such a dreary thing, you despise yourself and wonder if it matters if you go on living or not. Yes, I know. Sophie, would you let me help you? Help me? Yes, sir. Ah, now I've got you. No, I can shut you out. Mm. Sophie, where are you? It's your move. Sophie! That's the idea. Yes, you're really doing a very good job. Far more quickly than I could. It's the practical mind. Now, I started the catalogue three times, but always when I come to one of my old favourites, I stop and think how I caught it. <laughs> yes, I know. And then you're lost. <laughs> how well you understand. You know, you become quite a stabilising influence during the weeks that you've been here. I should be very sorry when you have to leave us. Well, I should be very sorry too, sir. I've been very happy here. I'm glad. <laughs> Silver watch. See them all over the place. All right, fly away. Oh. Don't you ever get tired of butterflies? I get tired of people first. Oh, well, of course. But I've only had three weeks of butterflies. What do you do when you get tired of people? You can't stick pins through their middles. I think sometimes I'd like to. Yes, I know that feeling. What was that? What? I thought I heard something cry out. Yes, there it is again. Why did you do that? It was caught in one of those beastly spring traps. Its legs were broken. Poor little thing. I hate traps. Hey, what do you think you're playing at? What are you doing with that rabbit? How many of those traps have you got? About a dozen. Do you have to use that sort? I bought them cheap. Any objections? I'll give you five pounds for the lot. Well, that suits me fine. And I'll take delivery now. I can't bring them now. I'm meeting someone. I said now. You'd better get them, Hick. Five pounds certain is better than any girl. Well, maybe you got something there. I'll bring him round. Oh, Hick. Could I have my coal?
I'll throw it in with the traps. You spoiled it. I don't want it anymore. Nice chap. He's one of the people I'd like to throw away. I'd stick to butterflies if I were you. You see? Well, he's brought her back. It's bad for her. Nonsense. Oh, well, there you are, Sophie. Any luck? No, only silver white. <laughs> I told Hick not to come here. And I have some work to do. I'm afraid it's my fault, Mrs. Fenton. I've uh, just bought some rabbit traps from Hick. Oh, why? He's sorry for the rabbits. What are you doing with my knife? I'll give it back to you later on. Well, I'd better go and collect the traps. Mind you only give him five pounds. I will. Oh, Mr. Summers. Yes? He'll try and make you give him more. I know, Hick. So do I. More tea, Sophie? But I haven't had any. You really must remember what you do, Sophie. You really must. You'd better go upstairs and change. Well, there's no one to impress here. You've been with Mr. Summers all the afternoon? Yes, he likes being with me. Well, that's because he's kind. You mustn't take advantage of it, Sophie. It's nice to have a friend. But not for you. It's not safe. Your father loved your mother, and you're very like him. I don't mind. I want to be like him. Oh, Mrs. Fenton. Hick asked me to give you this. He said it was his bill. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Summer. Is it, Eddie? It's Hick. He's dead. What? Down by the stables. There's a knife in his back. It's horrible. I saw him lying there and I saw the knife. Who could have done it? Wait, you must have been seeing things. Summers, go with it like good fellow with you and see what it's all about. I'll put on the coat.
dead, all right. You'd better send it for the police, Summers. Yes, sir. Come back into the house, Jess. I'm all right, Nicholas. We should all have to remember where we were when he was killed. You, I, Addie, and Summers, and Sophie. She'll have to remember, too. All right, Mr. Summers, thank you very much. You. Perhaps you'll be good enough to send Miss Marrow in now. Very well, Inspector. Oh, uh, yes, Mr. Summers? I know this is none of my business, Inspector, but um, the girl's likely to be a bit nervous. And, uh, well, I wouldn't go too much by appearances, that's all. That's all right, Mr. Summers. It'll just be the facts that count. Right, I'll get her. Yes, I'd like to know something more about Mr. Summers. I bet he's talked to the girl already this morning, still can't be helped. You know these people, Stuart. What do you think about Mrs. Fenton's evidence? Well, I think she's trying to protect the girl, sir. You notice she didn't really want to tell us about seeing her go out in the middle of the night. I think she's too honest not to. Yes, and she tried to hide the girl's coat. It's beginning to look like an open and shut case, all right. Sir. Sit down, Miss Marrow. I'd just like to ask you a few questions. That is, if you're prepared to answer them, of course. I don't know anything. Well, now, last night, did you go out at all? Out? Yes, Miss Marrow, out. Out of this house? Well, yes, I think I did. Well, aren't you sure? Yes, I did go out. What time would that be? I don't know. In the night? Where did you go to? To the wood by the church meadow. Now, why did you do that? Was it to meet someone? No. You knew this man, Hick, didn't you? Yes, I knew him. Did you like him? No, I didn't. But I didn't kill him. Was it to meet Hick that you went out to the wood at three o'clock this morning? No, it was to get my comb. Your comb? I left it on the edge of the wood. Hick had spoiled it, so I left it there. And so in the middle of the night, you put on your coat and went out to get a comb you'd left in the wood, is that it? Yes. Will you show me the comb, Miss Marrow? I haven't got it. I couldn't find it. Had Hick taken it again? No. I get things muddled. I get things the wrong way round. You're like Jess. You're trying to confuse me. We're not trying to confuse you, Miss Marrow. We only want the facts. But I was angry because he took my comb. Ah, now, yes, we're back to the comb again, Miss Marrow. This comb you went out to look for this morning and couldn't find. What exactly was it like? I brought it from France. It belonged to my mother. Yes, Miss Marrow, but what was it like? Was it like that, for instance? Yes, it was. That's my knife. That belonged to my mother, too. I see, Miss Marrow. That'll be all for now. Thank you very much. I'll have to ask you not to leave the house, if you don't mind. I think we should be wanting you for questioning a little later on. They want to see you again, Jess. Well, child? They think I killed him just because of my coat. Where did you get it? You told me you couldn't find it last night. But I found it. It was in the wood where you dropped it. But I couldn't find it, not in the dark. I had no light with me. You see, I, I didn't think. It was because of a nightmare I had. Are you sure? Well, this is one thing the police won't find. But they've got your coat. How did that blood get on it? What blood? I haven't seen my coat. They took it away. There's a blood stain on it. They found it because Jess tried to hide it. Jess tried to hide it? I remember she came and took it away. 
When? This morning after the police came. He said it had to be cleaned. Oh, David, I'm so frightened. You will help me, won't you? Yes, yes, of course I will. But what you really need is a lawyer. I know the very man. We'll drive up to London this afternoon. I can't. The police said I wasn't to leave the house. Oh, they did, did they? Well, that settles that. Never mind, you listen to me. I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'm not going, David. Do you want to stay here and get yourself arrested? I mustn't run away. Sophie, if things were different, you'd be right, but not now. Don't you realize how strong the case is against you? But I didn't kill him. I know, but someone's trying to make it look as if you did, and they're succeeding. But who? Your aunt, perhaps. Jess wouldn't do that to me. Besides, she was trying to hide the coat. They found it just the same. Oh, David, perhaps I did kill him, and I can't even remember. Of course you didn't kill him. You couldn't kill him. Well, then who did? I'm not certain. But one thing I know. As long as you're free, the real killer won't feel safe. Something more has to happen, and it's then the killer makes mistakes. Oh, you mustn't help me. They'll blame you, too. There's no crime in taking someone to see a lawyer. Besides, I hate traps. And I'm getting you out of this one. I've done it before for people I didn't even know. So I can do it for... for someone I love. Now, don't you argue anymore. You go back to your room and get your things ready quickly. Have you had enough breakfast? Mm -hmm. Good. Well, I think I'll get along now. Aren't I going with you? No, Sophie. It's better if I see Chubb alone first. It really is better that way. Have you any money? Mm. Good. Now then, where shall we meet? Do you know the Holborn Underground? No, but I can find it. Fine, then. Go to the Holborn Underground and wait on the King's Cross platform till I come. I'll get there by, uh, by 10.30, all right? Holborn Underground, King's Cross platform. Good. Bye now. Bye. Yeah. I expected to do before this. I missed my breakfast. What do you mean? You've been staying with a Nicholas Fenton at White Lodge, Tapgrove, Hampshire. So you did keep tabs on me. I thought Willie was too good to be true. Do you know Fenton? No. Nope. Do you know his wife? No. Nope. And I don't know her niece, the girl who's wanted for murder. Where is she, Summers? What makes you think she did it? The knife, the coat, the cock and bull story about a comb, the nature of the girl. The aunt's been expecting it, blames herself for letting it happen. What are you doing in all this, Summers? She had the opportunity, too. You forget that, Chubb. She's off her head. She won't hang. They'll shut her up. What's it got to do with you, anyway? Where'd you leave her? Corner house, Piccadilly. Do you mind if I go myself? As you like. 
The police will be with you then. They've been waiting for you since crack of dawn. Here. Catch. That's yours. It works now. There she is, over there in the corner. You're coming over? No, I'd, I'd rather wait outside. Excuse me, miss. Hello, boys. Come on. Excuse me, miss. They were ahead of us. The police? Yes. There's a warrant out for your arrest. I shall have to go to them. No, Sophie, no. There's too much against you. But we've got to get away. We're going north. How? By boat. Thank you. Where are we going? Newcastle. Where do we go when we get to Newcastle? Oh, China, South America, you choose. We can't go abroad just like that. You have to have passports and tickets and things, don't you? I've got friends. You'd be surprised at the chums I've picked up here and there. People who'd help us? Yes, people who've helped me before. There's some clothes in there for you. I bought them in Oxford Street. I hope they fit. I think you'd better change into them. There may be a police description out. Won't the police be checking people getting off the boats? No, they'll be watching those leaving the country, not those coming in. The trouble is, Superintendent, you can never tell with these chaps. They're trained to look one thing and think another. Any idea where he might make for, sir? Well, might be anywhere. Remember, this chap's got contacts all over the place. Our men have a free reign. We don't ask questions. Yes, you'll have some pretty funny friends one way and another. Yes. I'm afraid you'll have your work cut out to find him. If he lasts that long. He has that girl with him, remember? Tell you what, I'll lend you someone who knows the ropes, if you like. Another agent. Well, that's very good of you, sir. Mm -hmm. No, it isn't. I'm being good to myself. I don't want this department in the news. Scotland Yard has now been called in for inquiries into the murder at White Lodge, Tapgrove, Hampshire. The police of five counties are now looking for a man and a girl who, it is thought, may be able to help their inquiries. We haven't got a chance, have we? Of course we have. Don't you worry. We'll get away. You shouldn't be helping me. They'll blame you, too. Sophie, I don't like traps. Traps of any kind. Besides, you didn't kill him. Then who did? I don't know, but we're giving them time to find out. If you can get the girl at the same time, so much the better. But Summers is our job. Bring him in. I see. He knows half the secrets of this department. He had 18 months on counter-espionage at the end of the war. There's more ways in and out of this country than a carrier pigeon. He made nice reading for the Sunday papers, wouldn't he? Yes, very. That's his history ever since I've known him. Uh -huh. The answer may be there. With his experience of the North, I'd say he'd make for Newcastle. <laughs> This is Newcastle. Passengers from the London train travelling to Edinburgh should move over to platform eight.
please. Oh, that's it. Uh, just uh, two gentlemen, please. Get in, Mr. Summers. And the lady. No arguments. Get in. be grateful to be here at all. I'm very happy you came to us. It's the last thing I intended to do. I'm afraid Carl persuaded me. Carl was right. Now perhaps we can pay a little of our debt. You see, I dare not come back to Mina without you. I am Mina, and this is my husband Carl. We are friends of Mr. Summers, and we want to be your friends. We want to help you. Good to have friends. Professor Werner, Paul Ducla, Max Reiner, and Carl and Minna Cesar. Yeah, Cesar. No, just their latest addresses. Oh, and check them on the trains to Newcastle. There's a pal. Yeah, I'll be here. Sir? Oh, good afternoon. I've, um... Uh, won't you sit down? Uh, uh, I take Pongo away. Uh, that's Pongo. I give them all names because there's so many. Yes, yes, of course. A gentleman has asked me to call for the red fox. Is the fox male or female? The fox is female. Will it remain with your friends on this voyage? Yes, that is the idea. I'm told there is a good market in Mexico City. Mexico City? Mm. Right. I will tell my friend what you say. Now then, when may I call for the fox? Uh, my daughter will bring it to you tonight. Clara! Clara is my daughter's yes, name. Hello. Yes, we've... Uh, we've met before. Uh, she will meet you down at the old steps, near the Surtees house. Good. Eleven o'clock? She will be punctual. Uh, the price of the animal will be 150 pounds. No, no. Ridiculous. Uh, inclusive. You look very tired, my friend. You should take a holiday. Me? <laughs> Holidays cost money. Well, would a hundred pounds give you a pleasant weekend at the seaside? Well... Uh, perhaps uh, 125? I'll give it to your daughter. With your experience, it should be easy. Yes. Carl, it might be easy, but it will be expensive. Now, we drew this out. We thought you might need it. Oh, Minna, I, I knew you'd do this. I can't take it. You must have money. Where were you going to get it? There are ways. And take more risks? Now, where would we be if we had refused your help? He gave Carl and me our freedom. Now we want to help you. Now, don't be oh. silly. Oh, thank you, Minna. I'll see you get it back. We can manage. We don't care about that money. There's something more important. We have been talking to this child. She's very troubled. While you were away, I found out that Carl was a doctor. He's been trying to help me. You know, Mr. Summers, that we have had much experience of persecution. We know it is only necessary when very big lies have to be told. This girl is suffering from such a lie. Yes, I think so, too. But in one part of her mind, she still knows the truth. 
Are you expecting anyone? No. no. Into the kitchen. Wait in there. Thank you, Carl. Sophie. Dr. Cesar? Yes. My name's Shepley. Yes. I'm trying to find a friend of yours. We have only a few friends in England. If it were not for this friend, you wouldn't be in England now. Oh. I haven't seen him. Not for years. May I come in? By all means. I'd like to meet your wife. She may be able to help us. Of course. Minna, we have a visitor. Come on, we're going. I want you to understand that I'm nothing to do with the police force. I'm not looking for the girl. So you see, if you have helped him, you may have done him a disservice. We do not worry. Wherever he is, Mr. Summers can take care of himself. And of her. There you are, big boy. This will get you on the boat. Thanks. You sail a week tonight from Liverpool. What about passports? Be outside the High Wind Cafe on the same day at 12.30. There'll be a street bookie waiting. I see. You must read from the menu on the railings. Hao Yen Chao Fan Bo Lao Gai. He'll answer Yung Chao Dan. Hao Yen Chao Fan Bo Lao Gai, then Yung Chao Dan. Clever boy. Butterfly girl. It's a pretty name, isn't it? Did she do it? No, but that's difficult to prove. Oh, poor little thing. Well, goodbye. Goodbye, Tara. Thank you. David. They're working very hard, aren't they? Block both bridges. Never mind, we'll take that boat. Come on, we'll row across. What 
That's the baby. Fix this. Nothing safe, is it? Oh, we'll look after her. Right. Thank you. I found the car, abandoned on the moor. Gives them a good start. Not good enough. He'll see. We'll get him. I'll take this one, and um, have you any buns or sausage rolls or something? Sorry, sir. The baker doesn't deliver till 9.30 or so. How about some apples? They're good eaters. All right, then. Two pounds of apples, please. That'll be four and six. Hey, what do you think you're up to? I'm hungry, David. Can't we stop here and have something? You're always hungry. What about those apples? There's still some left in your bag. I want some tea. I'm sick of apples, aren't you? Well, yes, but I don't think we ought to stop here. Well, there's nobody in there. We needn't stay long. All right. Just this once, then. Sophie, what are you and Carl talking about? I asked him about getting muddled and whether that did happen to people. Mm -hmm. He asked me a lot of questions, and then he said that it did happen to some people, but not to me. And then he said that there was something that I'd forgotten that I have to remember, and that when I do remember it, I won't feel muddled anymore. Was it something about finding your parents dead? That. Something else. Clear up, come on. We've got to get our bus. Hey, Mike. What's the matter, Harry? Fares, please. All the way, please. Through the Patadale. Thank you. I was looking forward to that tea. You've left your bag. No, I've got it here. No, your handbag. But I haven't got it. Yes, you had it at the cafe. Oh, yes, I, I left it on the chair. I Come on. That young man spotted you, the one at the tea place. Well, what are we going to do? They'll comb the lakes. But we shan't be here. We'll cut across to Liverpool. They got on the Patterdale bus? Yes. About ten minutes ago. Right, sir. The main party's gone up the hill with a wireless van, sir. Straight ahead. Good. Thank you. Straight on. Give them a minute, then we'll double back. Still hungry? And scared. I know. Here. Put these things into your bag. We 
I've got to travel light now. This is rough country. We don't use the roads. Not by daylight. Watch out. Well, it says all right. Anything interesting in it? No, nothing that they couldn't have bought anywhere. No, there wouldn't be. Look, right. we've made three rings of police. This is where we found the bag, so we know they've come through the outer ring. There's only one way they can go, to the mountain. When they do that, we've got him. He's got out of tighter places than that. I believe you want him to get away. Well, I'm sounding the tally-ho this time, but I tell you, quite frankly, I hope I don't get the brush. They've been sighted towards Copley's Wood. It wasn't Jess you saw. I thought it was for a moment. I was so frightened. Because I remembered. Remembered what? And that's how it was when I saw my mother and father. Someone was there with a gun. I thought you found them first. That's what Jess said. She always explained it that way. She said I'd had a shock and thought I saw someone. That's what I remembered in the woods just now. I wasn't muddled. Someone was there with a gun. Who was it? Was it Jess? I don't know. I can't remember. The night that Hick was killed, you didn't even see him, did you? No, but they tried to make me think I did. You believe me, don't you? Yes, Sophie, of course I believe you. But then I'm not the police. OK, flycatcher. Message understood. Out. The helicopter chap says there's no sign of anyone in Copley's Woods, sir. Black mark, flycatcher. Helicopter reports couple seen near Sour Milk Gill, sir. Telephone Keswick. Tell them to send all mobile reserves to the bottom of Sour Milk Gill immediately. Priority one. Yes, sir. This must be Sour Milk Gill. Well, if we follow this waterfall down, it takes us to a narrow track which leads us to the main road. Keswick Section Station here. Message 1350. Superintendent requests all available mobile patrols. Yes. Concentrate north of Sour Milk Gill. <laughs>
Sophie, we've just got time to jump for it before they see us. Do you think you can make it? I can't, David. It's too long. All right. You see that ledge down there? Get in there and make yourself as small as you can. What are you going to do? I'm going to draw them off. Give me your ring. After they've gone and when it's dark, make your way back to the lakeside where we got off the bus. Remember? And wait for me there. Suppose they may catch you. They won't. I'll come for you, I promise. Lakeside where we got off the bus. See you tonight. Be careful. I will. Where's the girl? She's not here. I'm good. She's gone away. Which way? Well, that's your worry. Well, we got Summers. The girl won't be much trouble on her own. You better move the men to the other side of the gully as quick as you can. Is that wise? If she got away on that side and Summers wouldn't leave her behind, there's no point in a whole lot of men standing around on this side. How bad is Summers? They say he's broken a couple of ribs and he may have fractured an ankle. the policeman and slug the driver, I suppose. Come on. I told you. For you. I thought I'd have to pick myself up. I'm very glad you didn't. Because we've got to take things into our own hands now. And the first thing is you've got to have a talk with Jess. With Jess? It'll be all right. Only on the telephone. I think they're coming through. Hello? Hello, Jess? Oh, where are you? Oh, no, I see. Why are you telephoning? I need help, Jess, to get away, abroad. Where are you? You did very wrong to run away, Sophie. You must give yourself up to the police, mustn't you, Sophie? No, I need help, Jess. Things aren't quite the same any longer. Tell me you've started remembering. 
I don't get muddled anymore. What do you want? No, that's too much. I haven't got it. Two hundred. Yes, all right. How can I bring it to you? No, no, the post wouldn't be safe. I'll bring it to you myself. All right, Jess. Yes, all right. I'll be at... Five Coronation Way, Liverpool. Five Coronation Way, Liverpool. Thursday, three. Yes, Coronation, Thursday afternoon, three o'clock. You won't fail me, will you, Jess? No, I won't fail. Supposing she brings the police? I don't think she will. Anyway, it's a chance we've got to take her. Glasgow? I sure like a change sometimes. Your room will cost you five or this time, Summers. She's hot. I only want the room for an hour or two, Nora. We're expecting a visitor this afternoon, a lady. We want a private talk at three o'clock. You understand? I do. It'll still cost you five up. What's the matter? Is this stuff getting more expensive? <laughs> I'd like the room ready in an hour, Nora. Right, uh, but watch yourself. I don't want any trouble. No, do we? Feel like Hi, Yen Chow Fan, Bowl Out Guy. Young Chow Dan. What time does Red Fox run? Midnight. And the jockey? Francesco. What about passports? Another 25 nickel. Oh. Foxes are up today. So a butterfly. Thank you. Listen. Royal North Atlantic Dock. Bay D. Shed opposite the big crane. Packing case marked with letter K. Red chalk. Side opens easily. Room for two. Ship closely watched. But Captain Willing. Got it? Royal Suai North Atlantic. Suai 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 what was he shouting? Scram Charlie, it's the cop. Master Fox. Master Fox. That means you've got to have your hair cut off. Waiter. Yes, can I have you over? Hi, Yen Chow Fan, Bola guy. This way, Where are we going? To have our photograph taken. Thank you. I'll put my coat on. What about this hair? She can cut it later. For the photograph, I'll retouch it. Oh, good. All right? Mm-hmm. Look straight in the camera. No, no smile. Serious, please. Oh, there you are. Upstairs, first door on the right. And if you hear me buzz, it'll mean the boys is back again. So down the fire escape, quick, the both of you. Sophie, get into my pullover in your slacks. I'm going out to get you a jacket. And while I'm away, cut some of that hair off. Do I have to? Yes, Master Fox, you do. If the police do come, and you have to go down the fire escape, you know where to go, don't you? North Atlantic Dock, Bay D, packing case with red K. Room for two. 
Good. Bye, Sheffy. I won't be long. I'll take this. Nora? Yes? I'm just going out for a few minutes. But I'll be back before three. You might send some tea up to the girl, will you? I will, to be sure. Third degree, third degree, not allowed, England. The fourth degree if you don't talk. Now then, what name? Come on, what name? Mr. and Master Fox. Master Fox? Master Fox. The old girl thought you might like a cup of tea. I'll put it down here, shall I? Mr. Craft, how's tricks? Oh, so, sir. You got those clothes for me? I wasn't uh, quite sure of the size. To fit a boy? Yes. A slim boy? Well, uh, one of these? No, no, no. It's too big. No, too big. No, no. Hello, chum. Doing a spot of shopping for Master Fox? Push off? Yes, yes, you wish. I shan't ask you where she is. No, of course not. It would be a waste of time, wouldn't it? Anyway, it's you I'm after. The train now standing at platform seven in the express for London and will be leaving in two minutes. Stopping at the crew. Rugby and you. If the department did things properly, Willie, you'd have reserved seats for us. Yes, I know, old boy, but then we couldn't absolutely depend on a chap like you to fill them. Oh, you underestimate yourself. Oh, I'm a realist. Oh, you ought to have gone at the station. I said yeah. it was, so... uh, Madam, excuse me. Uh, David? Madam, in here, David. Let me, let me help you. Let, let me, me take a little fella. You come with me. Would you mind? Thank oh, you very help. much. Uh, Please go with the gentleman. Uh, excuse please. me, madam. Would you mind yeah. letting me pass? Oh, don't push. That's oh. right. Let me through, madam. You take your hands off me. Madam, please. By now, your oh. son has probably been kidnapped. Oh, Ernie! Oh! Oh, oh. Right, love. Now we must make a sound, child. We must be very quiet. I know that. Shh, we must be quiet. <laughs> Nicholas! Don't scream or I'll have to stop you, and I don't want to do it that way. You see, I'm very fond of you. Where's Jess? She's waiting for me. She won't be here. This is something that I have to do. It was you who killed my mother. I remember now. I saw you. And then Jess came, that day in the garden. You killed my mother. Only because she interfered. I didn't want to kill her. It was him. Jess liked him. He had to go. Just as Hick had to go. I warned Jess, but she wouldn't take any notice. I'm the only one she protects. As long as I have Jess, I'm safe. I'm sorry, child. It's locked. We shan't be disturbed. Sophie! 
Sophie! Yes, Little boy Blue here is getting impatient. If this is another game of yours, I don't think the department will be able to help. Oh, hurry him up, will you? Hurry him up. Inspector? Hello. Bay D. Right, drive on. They're right. Quick! Can you lift me up there? 